Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for joining me for Get Crackin' on Christmas. I'm so excited to be creating with all of you guys today, whether it's live or if you're catching the replay. Thank you so much. Uh, let me just give you guys a quick rundown of Get Crackin' on Christmas. So I've been doing this for several years now, and it's really just to kind of hold myself accountable Hello, and to make sure that I am having time to make my holiday cards um, and that I am using all of the adorable holiday supplies that I like to purchase. Um, but I'm also just enjoying the process. I'm trying different techniques. I am trying different supplies. And I'm just enjoying the process more by doing a few holiday cards every month throughout the year. Instead of waiting until October and mass producing and in a frenzy quickly making my cards. I just personally don't enjoy that process. So... I've been hosting this Get Crackin' on Christmas series for a couple of years now, and I love that a bunch of you guys have been joining me. It is always on the third Thursday of the month is when I post the card that I'm sharing with you guys. I post it over on my website, and then on that post, I announce when I will join you guys live. I just learned really quickly um, things pop up and schedules change, and there's different deadlines and different events and trips and all of that, that it's not safe for me to say I'm going to go live on the third Thursday of every month. Um, but on the third Thursday of every month, I will share with you when my live will be. So this just happens to be a week later. Um, but it's actually really fun because it's also Lawn Fawn release day. They just had their summer release and we're going to be making a beachy Christmas card with a bunch of Lawn Fawn stuff. I actually wasn't really thinking about that or planning it. Um, I just knew I wanted to do a beachy card um, because I know sometimes people look at me a little sideways like why are you making holiday cards in March and April and May and June? Um, so if we put a little summer twist, a beachy twist onto it. It's a little less like, oh, let's make Christmas cards. <laughs> so anyways, if you guys are joining me today or you plan to join me in the future, I really encourage you guys to join me during these lives or catching the replay and not only use that time to learn some new tips and tricks and get some fun ideas, uh, but also start working on your own holiday cards. So Right now, you could be die cutting some sentiments or coloring some images or cutting down some pattern paper or whatever it is, but it's time to get cracking on Christmas. And feel free to use the hashtag get cracking on Christmas um, and when you're sharing your cards. I love, love, love to see what you guys are creating. Thank you guys. So many of you are joining me live today and I really appreciate that. I know it's a different time for all of us. It's kind of not the middle of the week, but not a weekend. Uh, thank you so much. Denise says, I make a few Christmas cards every month. Also, it helps a lot in avoiding the last minute rush in December. I totally, totally agree. So before we get started, I just have to make a couple quick announcements because it's a couple things that I am super, super um, excited about. So one is uh, I am going to be hosting an in-person creative journey art retreat uh, here on Cape Cod in Massachusetts where I live. Um, it's my first in-person uh, art retreat since the fall of 2019. And I can't even tell you how excited I am, you guys. It's been far too long. Um, and what I'm most excited about, I'm not going to lie, um, I might have a hard time concentrating when I'm teaching because what I'm most excited about is the event is going to be hosted at Pelham House Resort. And um, this is going to be our view. The whole room is um, aligned with glass windows and glass doors. 
and this is what our view is going to be. It's going to be all ocean. We're going to be creating in this bright, spacious room, um, and we are going to have a wicked fun time. So I don't want to get into it too, too much. I did a whole live about the details of the event, and you can watch the replay right here on my YouTube channel. But I did just want to bring it to your attention if you didn't already know about it, because registration is opening up on Saturday, um, just two days from now, uh, June 24th at 10 a.m. Eastern Time. So I don't know if it's going to sell out right away. I never know. Um, I wish I had a magic ball, but I don't. So um, if you're interested in joining, I always recommend that you uh, sign up right away. So very, very exciting. Um, and hopefully this will be an annual event. So if it's not something that you can make it to this year, um, put it on your bucket list for possibly next year. All right. The other really fun thing I just wanted to quickly mention uh, before we jump into creating is it is Lawn Fawn release day. And um, with that, I am launching a new online class. I'm going to be teaching Tutti Fruity. This is going to be a self-paced class. Um, it's the summer months, so I uh, slow down in teaching a little bit um, to get some mermaid time in. Like I said, I do live on Cape Cod. But Tutti Fruity is going to be a self-paced class, meaning um, there won't be a live version of the class. But the class videos and handouts will become available mid-July. And um, this is actually the class that I taught in person at my in-person Crop on the Cape event in March. So it's a really, really fun class where I gathered all kinds of fun fruit items from Lawn Fawn. I didn't realize they were going to be coming out with a lot of fruit items during the summer release. So it works out nicely. Um, it kind of coordinates. and But I do want to just bring it to your attention because I have a limited amount of kits available. So if you're interested in trying an online class with me um, and you haven't tried one before, this is the perfect time um, because you can also get the kit in the mail. Um, but there is the option, if you have all things Lawn Fawn, um, there's the option that you can take the class without the kit. And always, always, always in all of my classes, you guys can substitute and create with what you have. Don't feel like you have to have every exact supply that I do. Thank you so much, Miss Breanne, for popping links in the chat. I really, really appreciate it. I know um, that you are busy, busy today working. So I appreciate you doing that. All right, you guys, I am going to flip the screen and we're going to dive right in. So this class or this class, well, it is kind of a class, right? Um, but for this uh, Get Cracking on Christmas live, I wanted to concentrate more on the technique of making this fun uh, beachy scene. So I already pre-stamped and colored all of my images because I know that creating the card is going to take a little bit of time and um, I figured it would be faster to have the coloring done. I share Copic coloring a lot um, in my videos here on YouTube, in my lives here on YouTube, in my free Create With Us uh, mini classes I do with Lawn Fawn, and then in my online classes. So if you're interested in learning more about Copic coloring, there's definitely lots of resources that you'll find through me. Um, but I have already colored all of my images. On the blog post, I do share the swatch list of the markers that I used. Um, of course, you can use any colors that you would like, but at least having that swatch list will help you find something similar, whether you're using Copic markers or you're using a different color family altogether. All right. So I am actually just going to push all these aside. I even glittered all of the things, you guys, but we'll talk about that later. I'm going to push them all aside. It's like a cooking show, like magic. They're all done, right? So this is a fun 
fun card that I created with just kind of this little infinity shaker. So the shaker isn't throughout the whole background, but it's just off of a little section here, which is really just kind of fun, something different to do. So we're going to make a fun watery background and a beachy scene. I love that it's showing on the beach and underwater. And so let's go ahead and um, let's go ahead and just start right away with our watercoloring. All right. Thank you guys so much for joining. And yes, my friend Jen said, if you can't make it to the retreat in the fall, come to Crop on the Cape in the March, in March. Yes, there's lots of options uh, to come hang out with us on Cape Cod. We love where we live, so we want to share it with all of you. So this is the Tim Holtz um, replacement non-stick mat. This works on his um, glass mat, but my whole table surface is glass. So I am just using it um, so that I have a little bit of grit um, when I get into my watercolor pencil technique which I just remembered, I forgot to grab myself a cup of water. Oh, rookie mistake, you guys, rookie mistake. Uh, so give me one second. I'm just gonna quickly grab um, some water. All right, that was so silly. I was thinking about how I was kind of ink smushing on the background and I was like, I don't need a cup of water, but I wasn't thinking. Leave it to me, leave it to me. Okay, so let's see. Yay, Erica says, I never thought of making a shaker card on half of the card like that. It works perfectly on this card. Yeah, just something fun, something different. All right, I'm gonna take a deep breath. I don't like when I um, am not as prepared as I mean to be. All right, so we are going to be using, um, or I'm gonna be using Distress Watercolor Pencils to actually ink smush, or I should say pigment smush, on the background for this card. Um, this is just something fun that I have started to do. Um, if you can't tell by the love that these pencils show. I absolutely adore my Distress watercolor pencils. I do have an online class all about some fun techniques um, to use with those pencils. So if you um, have them and you've been wanting to learn some more, that's a great class that you guys can take. So what I'm gonna do is I am gonna use, this is just some Distress watercolor cardstock. And I do have most of the supplies linked in the caption of this video. Um, and then I also have the blog post linked in the caption of this video. So that has a full, uh, full supply list and more detail shots of the project. Um, but I always, always use uh, Distress Watercolor Cardstock. It is my most favorite um, watercolor cardstock. I just find that I know how it's gonna react I love that it's a nice bright white um, and I like the price point and that it's pretty easy um, to find and to get into your crafty space. I'm gonna be just using a piece of plastic, a piece of transparency. It's nothing fancy. I actually think it's like just a bit of packaging. And like I mentioned, I'm gonna be using um, distress, distress watercolor pencils. I'm actually only going to be using the uh, sorry, I didn't understand that. Oops, the salvaged patina um, distress watercolor pencil. <laughs> oh boy, technology! Gotta love it when your Apple Watch is trying to talk to you. I'm only going to be using the salvaged patina distress watercolor pencil, um, and this is just a fun technique that I started doing. Um. But I will just let you know that this is, you can do the same technique with um, Distress inks. I just, you get a different look when you use the uh, Distress watercolor pencils. 
And because of that, um, it's just fun to kind of remember all the different mediums that we might have in our crafty space and what we can achieve with them. So I am gonna take the Salvage Patina Distress Watercolor Pencil and I'm actually dipping it right into a cup of water. This is gonna soften the pigment of the pencil. Um, even though they're called pencils, they are a woodless uh, watercolor pencil. Um, which is really nice so that I can do something like this where I'm not worried about damaging the wood of the pencil. And then also, um, they're very, very highly pigmented. There's a lot of pigment in these pencils. You can get a lot of really great looks with it. So what I'm doing is I'm dipping the Distress Watercolor Pencil into my cup of water. And you can see I'm not, I'm kind of dipping and scribbling, dipping and scribbling. Um, I don't want to break my pencil, so I'm not pushing super hard, but I'm just kind of plopping some pigment down onto this craft sheet. And again, this is that non-stick um, replacement mat for the Tim Holtz uh, glass mat. My whole tabletop is glass, so I think that glass mat is probably the only product that Tim hasn't been able to convince me that I need just because my whole tabletop is glass. But I love this non-stick mat to just stick down and have when I need a craft mat. The reason why I'm not scribbling right onto my glass is the pigment would kind of spread in a way that I don't want it to. Here on this mat, because this is a bit toothy, it's holding the pigment into these great little puddles of color. And so that's why I'm working on this. And if I was doing this with regular uh, distress inks or distress oxides, I would do the same thing. I'd be doing it on this craft mat, not my glass tabletop. So hopefully uh, that makes sense. All right, so I'm just gonna set this cup of water and the pencil aside in case I need some more pigment, but this is a decent amount to get started. Uh, Denise says, I have one set of those watercolor pencils, but I haven't used them very much. All right, Miss Denise, this is uh, your, your chance, your reminder to break them out and use them. Um, and then also maybe check out my online class for some inspiration. All right, so like I said, this is Distress Watercolor Cardstock, and it has a textured side and a smooth side. And I use both sides, but I mostly use um, the smooth side. I actually have a card coming out next week where I use mostly the textured side. But anytime you're gonna want to stamp anything um, and you want the detail to um, stay, I would use the smooth side. So in this case, later, we are gonna be stamping some music notes and some, some little bubbles. So I wanted to make sure that you know, when I go to stamp, it's going to stamp really nicely. So I am going to be using the smooth side. And these are just two pieces that I had on my table that I know are big enough. Um, I, I get the Distress Watercolor cardstock in eight and a half by 11 sheets because I use it so much and I preserve every last drop. All right, so then I had that piece of plastic. Okay, here's the piece of plastic. I'm like, it's see-through. I can't see it. So what we're going to do, and I'll just start with the larger piece of um, paper. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just take this plastic and I like that I can kind of bend and roll it. And I'm gonna pick up some of this pigment from my craft mat. And I'm gonna just start to place it down onto this Distress Watercolor cardstock. So we're using watercolor cardstock because we are gonna be using water. Um, obviously, uh, there's water in the pigment already from me dipping the pencil in the um, cup of water, but we're also gonna be spritzing this as well. So I'm just kind of plopping some pigment droplets uh, all over the background here, okay? And then what I'm gonna do is use my Distress Sprayer and what's nice about the Distress Sprayer is you can do a full pump of the handle here and get a really nice full mist, but you also can kind of just toggle the pump and you get like little droplets. 
So that's what I'm gonna be doing. I'm kind of toggling it so I'm getting the little droplets and I'm breaking up some of this pigment. So again, you could be doing this with uh, Distress Ink um, and it, it would look super cute and I've done it before. I just, with the pencils, you get a little bit of a different look uh, because it's a different medium and I just think that's super, super fun. So now that I've kind of broken up that pigment a little bit, made it a bit more organic, I'm gonna use my Ranger heat tool and I am gonna dry this layer. Now this um, Ranger heat tool is a diffused heat, so it's very different than an embossing gun. I don't need to worry about it scorching my cardstock. Um, I can literally leave it in one place pretty close to the paper for a very long time and it's not going to um, leave a brown mark behind which is really important when you're working with inks and you're trying to uh, build up your layers. I'm going to just move my craft sheet off to the side a little bit since you guys kind of saw that process. I'm going to be doing it again but you at least saw that process and you can always go back in the video later and watch it again. But this way you'll be able to see my background a little bit more. All right. Thank you, Brianne. I know Brianne's over there busy, busy working on some projects. So I appreciate you being here. So I love making backgrounds like this. Um, I find it actually really relaxing. And I think it's something that you could do if you're kind of in a creative rut but you just wanna get creative. Um, maybe you don't have an end process in mind, but you could you know, make them, make some monochromatic backgrounds, make some, um, make some, you know, mix some colors and make some different ones and just have the backgrounds at the ready. Backgrounds with an ink smushed um, technique. You could use your large sentiment dies on them. You could um, die cut sentiments out of them there's a lot of stuff that you could do with them so just having them on hand is really fun and again i think this is kind of a fun process once you kind of start doing it you kind of don't want to start stop it, it's a little um it's a little addicting <laughs> Ooh, brianne's making ink stands i love it hopefully you're making some square ones to send to me i have to restock my online shop i'm almost out of stock of them all right, so this is pretty dry. There's a couple puddles of um, pigment left and that's okay. I'm gonna bring my uh, pencil back in um, and I am gonna scribble some more pigment down on my sheet. I am doing it on here instead of the transparency because I find that this sheet is a little, again, it's a little bit more toothy so it grips the pigment a little bit more and I find that it lays down more pigment. And I love the salvage patina color. It's so pretty. I mean, that's no shocker that I love the teal color. All right, something else that you could do is you could um, you know, spritz this a little bit to add a little bit more water to this as well. Um, I literally keep losing my clear piece because it's clear. Um, so again, I'm rolling that transparency, picking up some pigment, and I'm going to roll and kind of pluck it down. And we're gonna build up some watery layers. And I just love this. I just think it's so fun. It's like playing, right? It's almost like finger painting, like as a kid. So I'm gonna set this aside a minute and I'm gonna try to get my first layer, um, or at least some pigment down on the second piece that I'm gonna need to cut some waves out of. All right, I'm definitely gonna break this pigment up with my Distress Sprayer. Again, I'm just kind of toggling the um, handle, not doing a full spray, and that does little droplets. 
And on this bigger one, I'm kind of just breaking up those bigger pools of pigment. I'm just gonna move these away for a second. I'm just wiping, keep my table dry um, using a flour sack cloth. That way um, the heat radiates off of my glass tabletop. So it's also drying things from behind as well, which is uh, really nice. Um, <laughs> Hi, Joan. She's hijacking jacking her husband's YouTube, catching my first live, better late than never. I love it. I'm not sure, Joan, is it happy, Joan? Um, and just so you know, you're more than welcome to keep hijacking your husband's YouTube, but you can sign up for a free Google account as well um, to be able to comment if you want to in the future. Uh, Erica says, I feel like I need to do a get cracking on birthdays session. I make 150 birthday cards every summer to give my students over the school year. That is so awesome, Erica. The giant land fawn dies have really helped speed that up. The blog post today is definitely going to inspire a few of the designs. Yeah, that new make a wish, uh, giant make a wish is so cute. Hello. Thank you guys for popping in for the first live. I really appreciate it. And remember, all of my lives are available after for replay. So if you guys are working on a project in your studio or your crafty space or your kitchen table and you want to catch any of the replays, they are all here on my YouTube channel. All right. So you can see how the layers are building up on this one. And I just love it. And again, it looks very different than if I were to use distress inks. So we're going to build up a little bit more um, on here. So again, I'm taking my distress watercolor pencil, I'm dipping it into a cup of water, and I'm scribbling it out on a craft sheet. It happens to be the replacement nonstick mat for the Tim Holtz glass mat. And I'm just laying some of that salvage patina pigment down from the Distress Watercolor Pencils. I love it so much. Perfect. All right, so now I'm just gonna move that out of the way. And I'm using just a piece of plastic. I'm rolling it to pick that pigment up and I'm gonna bring it over to this piece of paper. And we could use multiple colors. We could layer our colors if we wanted to. Um, you can do a lot, you can do a little, and no two backgrounds are ever gonna look the same, and that's okay too. Um, it's just so fun. Like, it's kind of one of those things. Honestly, it kind of depends on the mood you're in, on how the inks lay down. Um, if you're more aggressive and just needing to get some frustrations out, it'll look a little different. But it's just a really fun process. And kind of one of those processes that you just kind of got to let go and just let it be. All right. So now I am really happy with this one. I'm going to keep this one the way it is. There are some puddles um, still wet. I'm going to let those sit a minute before I blot them up. But this piece here, I am going to break some of this up so it'll look a little bit more organic. Again, I'm just kind of toggling that distress sprayer so it lets a little bit more ink out. I'm sorry, water out more like droplets not a mist and I'm gonna dry it and again I can't tell you guys if you like to do any sort of inky techniques with your ink pads or your watercolor pencils having this distress heat tool is game changer I mention it all the time but um, a few years back my original Ranger heat tool finally died after well over a decade of use and um, I didn't buy a new one right away. So I was doing my normal like inky backgrounds and stuff and trying to dry things with my embossing gun. And I was struggling so hard. So I was like, um, oh my gosh, I now understand why some people in my classes are struggling because they're probably trying to use their embossing gun. So definitely if you like to do 
layering of inks and needing to dry things in between layers, I can't recommend enough um, the Distress Heat, uh, the Ranger Heat Tool. Um, I do not go live every week on Thursday. Um, the third Thursday of the month is Get Kraken on Christmas. And I always have a blog post that tells you when the coordinating live will be. Sometimes it's the evening of that Get Kraken on Christmas Day. Sometimes it's the next day. This just so happened that it was a week later um, with Father's Day weekend and getting ready for Lawn Fawn release day, launching my new class, getting ready to launch the registration for the Creative Journey Art Retreat. Um, it just happened that this is what worked in my schedule. But I believe you guys can sign up on YouTube for notifications to always be notified when I go live. So that's another option that you can do. Um, and then I always share the link ahead of time in my email newsletter so that you can tap the little bell for that specific video when I go live. Um, so yeah, I try to, uh, I try to um, make sure all of you guys know where I'll be and when. All right, let's see. That takes forever. I'm not sure what takes forever, Kate. Thank you so much, Miss Brienne. Yes, if you're interested in shopping, if you're enabled for anything, Brienne was just sharing um, my page on my website that has all of my affiliate links. And then in the caption of this video is a list of supplies, and those are all my affiliate links too. But look how yummy these are. I just love them. And they're a bit more translucent than if I were to have used ink pads. Um, again, it's just a little bit of a different look and something fun to realize um, what we can do with our Distress watercolor pencils. But you could most certainly use your Distress inks um, and that's that would be super cute too, right? All right, the first thing we're gonna do with these backgrounds, they're all nice and dry. Um, I'm actually just gonna roll my craft sheet up and get it out of here. I just store it right in its little box and I just keep it in my drawer over here with my ink blending tools. We'll kind of clean off this transparency. All right, good, good, good. So the first thing that I am going to do is make some waves. So I'm gonna use this smaller piece here and um, I'm using Lawn Fawn's Wave Borders, okay? And I am just gonna die cut myself a few rows of waves. So I'm just gonna do two strips and I have some best used best ever craft tape um, over here that I use over and over. And I'm just gonna kind of hold these dies in place so that they stay uh, nice and straight. And I'll just show you guys in case you're not familiar. Um, this is just the Spellbinders Best Ever Craft Tape. It's a low tack tape, so I'm using it to hold my dies in place, and I literally use it over and over and over and over. Um, and I um, then just stick it on my arm here that's holding my phone to display my desk, and I just keep using it. So some of them look a little loved, but oh yeah, heat drying with the embossing heat tool takes forever. Yeah, well, because you have to be careful um, that you don't scorch your paper. Yeah. All right, and I'm just gonna bring in uh, my die cut machine to go ahead and die cut these. And then I think we'll also die cut um, something else real quick. Of course, I have my handle the wrong way. Let me turn this. I don't normally die cut on my desk like this. Uh, behind me, I have a, a cube cube unit that I put my die cut machine on, and that's what I do all my die cutting on. So, but all right. So now we'll have our two rows 
of waves that we need and they're a little bit um, different sizes, which is great. And I don't care that the bottom looks like this because we're just gonna overlap it like so and nobody will ever know, all right? All right, the other thing I want to do real quick, let me set this aside is I wanna die cut my um, stitched hillside, which is gonna be my beach, my sand. I'm just sticking my best ever craft tape back on my uh, stand over here. So I'm gonna just take a piece of, um, uh, I'm trying to see, I'm just gonna take a piece, this is a piece of, Distress White Heavy Stock. This is my favorite paper to ink blend on. And I'm just gonna kinda die, uh, kinda cut it in half. It doesn't need to, I'm actually gonna do it a little less than half. Cause we'll do use one piece for our sunset and one piece for our beach. Okay, so we're just gonna do a little quick ink blending. I'm gonna use Lawn Fawn Dough Ink. And I'm of course using my rectangle ink stands cause they're the best to hold my ink, um, my ink pads in place. Now, if you own the ink stands and they um, don't grip onto your table, what I recommend, and I learned this from Brienne, is just take a little bit of the isopropyl alcohol in a mister bottle and just give those little rubber feet a little spritz and wipe. Um, I don't keep my ink stands on my table at all times, so I kind of toss them in my cart next to me so they get a little dusty. But now look, I can't even, can't even move that thing, which is exactly what we want. So we don't have to worry about um, holding our ink pad as we go to ink blend. All right, so I'm gonna be using a blender brush. I always tap off some of the ink and I start brushing right on my glass tabletop. So if you don't have a glass mat um, and you're struggling with a smooth blend, I really recommend ink blending on glass. It makes a huge difference. And we're just gonna ink blend this as dark or as light as we want it. I want it pretty light. Um, and I'm kind of just picking up that ink I left behind off my table. So there's no waste, but it's bringing it in at a smoother, um, a smoother rate. So there's our little beach. And I'm gonna use that isopropyl alcohol again to clean off my table. So I just keep it in a little Ranger Mr. Bottle and then I just wipe with my flour sack cloth. And what's nice about using the isopropyl alcohol is it dries right away, so it doesn't leave any um, damp residue behind, so I don't have to worry about my paper getting wet. So then I'm gonna use Lawn Fawn's Simple Stitched Hillsides. So these are the simple ones, they just kinda have different angles of a single curve instead of the wavy ones. And we're gonna just get a cute little stitched hillside um, to be our beach. And for this one, because it is a bit smaller, I'm gonna be able to just use my small die cut machine from Honey Bee, which is what I use the most, cause it's just easy. Oops, see my best ever craft tape is like, I'm done, you, you've used me too much. It's time for some new pieces. Treat myself to some new pieces. <laughs> oh, I was just talking about that in my last online class where we just kind of like struggle with a supply where it would just take us two seconds to get new and then our life would be so much easier. And that's me with the best ever craft tape. <laughs> Look, I have more pieces everywhere. All right, we'll just go ahead and die cut that. And this is why I did all of my Copic coloring ahead of time, because this card is a little bit more involved in the process, and I kind of wanted to share with you 
the process because I feel like I share my coloring a lot. And so I thought it would be more fun to kind of learn a fun new process. So there we go. We got our cute little stitched hillside beach with our wicked cute little waves. It's all starting to come together. All right, so if you had just joined me, this is the cute card we are in the process of making. I'm gonna go ahead and just measure um, since I already figured out the sizing of everything, I'm going to stick with that. So that's two and a half inches. So we're going to cut this down to be four and a quarter by two and a half inches. Um, it can be any height that you want it to be, right? Um, I'm going to go a little bit over so that I can cut a little bit off of both ends. So this is two and a quarter, two and a half. And then we need uh, four and a quarter. All right, so there's our four and a quarter by two and a half. This is going to be our shaker. And while I'm at it, I'm gonna go ahead and just trim these down to be four and a quarter, which is um, the width of the card. And I'm just taking a little bit off of both ends. I don't know why I do that. I just think it kind of gives a nice finished look in case something like blobbed and I don't know, like the ink concentrated on the end. I don't know. Sometimes I don't know what my brain is thinking of, but. It works for me, so we're just gonna go with it. All right, so I'm just trimming the waves down to four and a quarter, and then I'm gonna trim my hillside to be four and a quarter. Oh, this is actually already four and a quarter. Yay, me, okay. Um, and then that is gonna be our sky. Okay, moving on, moving on. Throw all these little bits away. <laughs> Jen just said, look at me doing the maths. I know, math in me is not, it's not a strong point, you guys. It's definitely not a strong point. All right, so let's go ahead and um, ink blend our sunset. So we're gonna have about a two inch um, sunset. And, but I don't want to trim it down because it'll make it easier for me to layer my stitched hillside um, over it. So I'm going to actually put my line at two and a quarter. So it's a little bit lower. And the reason why I'm doing this is because I want to make sure that when I'm ink blending with all three of my colors, that all of my colors will show. So I'm gonna have some fresh lavender down here and I wanna make sure that that shows. All right, hello, hello. Thanks for joining, for just popping in. So I'm gonna start with butter. Butter is such a pretty soft yellow from uh, Lawn Fawn and it's been out for a long time, but I've just fallen in love with it the past couple of months. So now I'm like, what are all the things that I can use butter ink on is pretty much my life. Um, I have one ink blending tool per color family, but I don't know if the last yellow I used was a dark yellow, like Distress Mustard Seed or, um, or number two pencil from Lawn Fawn. So what I do, I don't really ever clean my blending brushes, but this is like with water, this is how I clean my blending brushes. I'm vigorously massaging the ink or the handle into my flower sack cloth. And you can even see, even though my uh, flower sack cloth is very loved, there's this ring of yellow ink because it's just kind of taking and absorbing that ink off. Um, you could do this with a paper towel too if you want. I'm trying to use less paper towels in my life. Um, so the flower set cloth is always in my lap to wipe up inkiness, liquid, glue off my hands. It just works really, really nicely. 
All right, and so I like to start with my lightest color, which is gonna be on the top of the sky. So I'm starting with Lawn Fawn Butter. Oh yes, we will be using um, purple, yep. And Brienne just yelled, hi, Jen. And I'm like, hi, Brienne, you've been here the whole live, but I just realized she's saying hi to my friend, Jen. All right, so we're using butter. It's a very, very soft color. So it's all about building up your layers. Um, I'm not pressing hard with my ink blending tool, but I'm going over and over and over it lightly um, to get that nice soft dusting of color. But, you know, I don't get any harsh marks or lines or choppiness. Sometimes if you're struggling with a smooth ink blend, it's the paper you're using. Again, this is Distress White Heavy Stock, which is my most favorite uh, cardstock to use for ink blending. It's such a, it's 130 pound, really nice paper, and it takes to the inks so nicely when you're ink blending. Um, the other thing that you might have um, that might be making it so that you're struggling is you're using a smaller blender brush. Um, this one's a fairly big one. I have the smaller ones too. The smaller ones are great if you're trying to do um, certain colors and certain parts of your stempl stencils or whatever. Um, but having a bigger blender brush head when you're trying to do smooth backgrounds really makes a huge, huge difference. Anytime I'm switching color families, I'm gonna clean off my table surface so I don't have any of that yellow ink uh, left behind. Um, hello, Anne. Anne's so happy that she's able to join me live without having to stay up all night. Well, I'm happy for you too. And all the times that you did stay up all night, thank you so much. Um, so next I'm going to be using Lawn Fawn Bubblegum. And I'm using water-based dye inks so that they have the translucent properties um, so that when I start to overlay um, my two colors together, they are going to make a new color. Um, you don't get that as much if you're using like Distress Oxides because Distress Oxides have a pigment property. Um, and then I also like to use a water-based dye ink because they're just a little bit brighter and more vivid. That does not mean I don't like my Distress Oxides. I love Distress Oxides for uh, other uh, techniques. So Brienne's asking, um, are you both called Jen when you're all together or, or is one Nickerson and one Shirkus? Um, everybody here, Brienne, calls me Shaka. And poor Jen tried to make a nickname for herself, but it didn't really stick. So Jen is usually Jen and I'm usually Shaka if we're in our friend group. All right, so a little bit of bubble gum ink. I tap it off on my non-porous surface. And now I'm gonna kind of blend in from the sides. And I am lightly overlapping that butter ink. That's gonna give a fun little soft orange color. But I wanna make sure I leave some of that butter ink on its own up at the top. So I'll have yellow, orange, and then pink. And I really just want this to be a soft, soft um, background because I want my ink smushing with the Distress Watercolor Pencils and my shaker card. There's a lot going on on this card. So I don't want my uh, blended background to be too bold or take over too, too much. So now what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna take my yellow blending brush again and I'm not even going in and getting any more ink. I'm just kind of brushing it along the seam of the bubble gum and the butter, the pink and the yellow. And this is just gonna kind of buff it out and soften it. As your inks dry and as they soak into paper, um, you're gonna get a nice smoother blend as well. It might look a little choppy at first, um, <clears throat> but it, it will kind of smooth out. <laughs> yeah, Jen, my friend Jen said it was worse when there were three Jens. Hello, Terry. Thanks for joining on your little lunch break. I appreciate it. And remember, if you guys can't stay the whole time, this replay will be available on my YouTube channel after. 
All right, so now I'm gonna be using fresh lavender. So yes, a little bit of purple. I've been giving purple a lot of love lately, you guys. I just want, you know, a little bit of credit where credit is due. Um, we kind of have this running joke in my online classes. Um, often when I make rainbow things, I omit purple. <laughs> so I have more room for teal. <laughs> Brienne wants to know what happened to the third gen. Uh, that's a story for another day, Miss Brienne. I'll tell you about it. We didn't, we didn't kill her though. It's not like, uh, I love that my friend Jen literally just said a story for another day. We didn't murder her. It's not like a true crime story. All right. So this is my purple blending brush. I'm just making sure there's not a really dark purple on there before I go in with fresh lavender because fresh lavender is a really soft purple. Now I know I'm not gonna ink blend to the bottom, so that's why I've been putting my fingers down on this. If I was ink blending this whole background, I would tend to uh, put something down to hold it um, so that the oil from my fingertips would not um, leave a mark. So I can obviously go past my lines, but I am not worried if it's not smooth down there and if any of my fingerprints show up. Speaking of true crime, all of my DNA is in all of my cards, so I better not ever uh, murder anybody. I wonder, saying murder, if YouTube's gonna flag me. I, I don't know all these things about YouTube. I'm still learning. All right, so I am ink blending with Fresh Lavender. I'm bringing it up into the bubble gum, which is giving another really fun, pretty in-between color, mixing those two colors together. Okay, and then I'm gonna go back with my bubble gum or my pink blending brush. I'm not gonna get any more, um, ink from my bubblegum ink pad, but whatever's kind of left on there, I'm just kind of buffing that seam in between the two colors, and it really does make a difference. So pretty. I love it. Good old summer sunset. Um, <laughs> Kate, murder she didn't write as to opposed to murder she wrote. I know. I love it. Four gens. There were four gens? Oh, I have to think about that one. I'm having a mind blank on that. Um, and just so you guys know, off camera, I have my blender brush caddy with all my brushes. It's on a four inch Lazy Susan. I carry these in my online shop. It makes life so easy. Um, it doesn't take up a lot of table space, which is really nice because um, who wants to give up their table space? But look at how awesome that looks, you guys. Such a pretty uh, sunset, such a pretty sunset. Okay, so now we are going to, I'm trying to think what the best, best next step is. Um, I think, um, I think I'm actually gonna attach this um so that I can stamp my sentiment I think that's what I'm I think that's what I'm going to do so remember I had it doesn't need to be exact but I measured um that I wanted two inches of a sunset um so I did my line a little less so I'm going to go up a little higher again it doesn't need to be super precise um and we'll get our ground into place and so now I'm gonna go ahead and take this background and I'm gonna take my little Santa Claus for placement. And the two stamp sets that I used to create this card was Beachy Christmas and Christmas Fishes, which I absolutely adore both of these. Um, so, so fun. Living on Cape Cod, obviously we don't have palm trees, so I don't necessarily use that stamp very often, but everything else in all of these um, sets is just perfect. So on this card, I stamped, have yourself a merry beachy Christmas. But for this one, I always like to kind of switch it up. Um, I think... 
I'm just trying to decide. I actually might do Tis the Season to be Jelly, because we've got a jellyfish on there, and then Season's Greetings. I think that's what I'm going to do. Because again, I like to kind of switch it up a little bit. So up here we'll do Tis the Season to be Jelly. Okay. And then I am going to do um, Season's Greetings. And we're just going to tuck that right near Santa's hat here. I also just want to make sure I have enough room for my super cute sunshine up here. So I'm going to actually move this down a little bit. Oh yeah, so cute. Yeah, super fun designs. And it's great because um, there's a lot of good oceany elements that could be used for non-holiday cards too. So it's, a, it's good sets, good sets if you like the ocean stuff. Which, can we just talk about, oh my gosh, so much amazing ocean stamps and dies have come out this year. Oh my gosh, companies were emailing me and asking me to guest for them and they would like show me the release and I'm like, I can't say no, this is all beachy and adorable. So I have been sharing a lot of fun ocean inspiration over on my website if you haven't seen it yet. Uh, from Purple Onions and Hero Arts and Trinity Stamps. So much fabulousness. Oh, great. I do not have to stamp that again. Love that. Love when that happens. All right. Yeah, the beachy Santa is super cute. He's like living his best life, right? In his off-season Santa Claus. All right, so now that we have that done, I'm just gonna kind of set that aside and let's go ahead and work on our shaker. So this is our very fancy, um, what is gonna be our shaker card. And what I'm actually going to use is just a clear bag. These are just the bags that I store my cards in. I actually was trying to make it so that I didn't have to trim it down at all, but this little bit of gap was kind of bothering me. So we are gonna trim um, this plastic down, but that's okay, it's, it's all good. I was trying to uh, give a good tip and trick to make it a little bit easier, but um, it's all good. So what I'm gonna do is this is two and a half inches by four and a quarter. So I am gonna get myself a little piece of plastic that is a little bit larger than that. So I said two and a half. So I'm gonna go to three and a half just to give myself some extra. So I'm gonna go to three and a half. And then I'm gonna trim and I, um, I'm just gonna trim Oh, I should have done that the other way, you guys. Yeah, hold, pause. Good thing I have more clear bags. All right, starting over. I'm gonna do three and a half on the four and a quarter end because I just want a little extra space to be able to um, fold over and have adhesive on the back. You'll see, you'll stick with me, you'll see. So we're doing three and a half and then we will do, instead of four and a quarter, we will do five. So I'm gonna do five and a quarter. Oh, no, we'll do five. And then I'm just gonna trim this edge off. The sealed edge is basically. Okay. And there are companies like Trinity Stamps is now making those shaker pockets to do infinity shakers. I shared um, a fun mermaid card where I made an infinity shaker and those pockets make it so easy, you guys, which I love because we all know measuring and doing this is not my strong point. Um, and it just makes the card come together so nicely. So see, I just got two pieces. We just wanted a little bit of space. So it is a little bit wider 
than the piece of cardstock was what my brain was thinking. I don't know if that's what my words were portraying. Um, let's see. Kate says, quick question. I see you're using Versamark. Um, so I was using Versafine, Kate, just so you know, it's different than Versamark. What are your thoughts on archival ink? I need a special cleaner to get it off my stamps. And I wasn't sure if Versamark was different. So just, um, again, this is Versafine and, um, Versamark is by the same, um, let me just move my laptop down a little bit so I can show you. Versa Mark is by the same company, but this is a watermark stamp pad. So it's clear ink for embossing and tone on tone stamping. So Versa Fine is my most favorite ink pad to use for all my sentiment stamping um, or like to stamp the sunglasses on this sun or the little faces on the Krabby Crab here when we do the uh, music notes, all those things I love Versafine. Um, and it cleans off really nicely. And then all of my images that I'm coloring with either watercoloring or Copic coloring, I use um, Lawn Fawn Jet Black. This ink pad is alcohol marker friendly and watercolor friendly. So that's what I use for all of my images that I'm gonna color in. And I do also like archival. So I have the black soot archival that I use a lot when I'm doing more mixed media projects. But my two most used um, black inks are these two here. And I do um, carry them in my online shop. All right, yeah, the mini shaker is kind of a fun idea, right? I love it. So what I'm gonna do is I have this, I'm just kind of holding it in place. I am gonna cut the corners off, okay? And this is gonna make it so that we can fold it nicely. And I'm just gonna keep holding it in place. And we're gonna cut the corners off, okay? You guys see that on camera, the corners? I cut close to the paper corners. So that way we're gonna have little tabs to fold over, okay? So I'm gonna just set this aside a minute and we're now going to build our cute little beachy scene. And because this is gonna be in the shaker, I don't want to use any foam squares or anything, which is really hard for me <laughs> to not add dimension, but that's okay. It's still going to be uh, super, super cute. Um, Cause again, there's a lot going on. So I'm just gonna follow the placement of what I did previously because I've already figured it all out. So there's no need to um, switch things up. And I'm just gonna use the Lawn Fawn glue tube to build my little underwater scene. And so I've got a few little shells over here. I've got a scallop shell and a little moon snail shell. Again, I've already glittered all of the things. Those are all things that I share a lot in all of my videos and my classes. So for the sake of time and wanting to share how this card came together um, as a shaker, I pre-did all of that. So we're gonna add our um, Christmas tree, our seaweedy Christmas tree. I mean, how cool, I want a seaweedy Christmas tree. And I am making it a little bit shorter. I did in my sample as well. So I'll trim some of that off in just a minute. And then we have our little caroling crab. And we have our caroling jellyfish. So cute. And this set comes with a lot of different faces that you can put on these guys. Um, so many different characters, they can look very different from one to the other, which I love that. Love that Lawn Fawn includes all those little, little images. All right, so now we're gonna do some music note stamping and some bubbles. Um, and so I'm gonna go ahead and the two music notes are in Christmas Fishes. And what I like to do when I'm trying to like kind of cluster stamp, 
One is I like to use this small acrylic block. This is the 1.75 acrylic block block, which I love um, for kind of little detail stamping. And then I'm putting one music note on one side of the block and the other one on the other side of the block. This way I'm gonna be able to flip it and really kind of get in and get the stamping done. Um, but this little block, don't be afraid of stamping with blocks. I know we're so used to stamping with our stamping platforms now, but stamping little things like these music notes, it's 10 times faster to do it with an acrylic block. And it just takes a little bit of practice. Um, and I actually just restocked these blocks on my website. I actually can't keep them in stock. Um, and I love them so much. They fit in your hands so nicely. And you can see, I'm actually going to do one up here, just how easy it is to just quickly stamp those out. All right. Yeah, I will not lose the clear sheet. I know. Thank you, guys. I'm putting it on top of my sunset background. So in a few minutes when I have lost it, you all can remind me. You're welcome, Katie. Happy to share with you. Um, always happy to answer questions. All right, so now we've got bubbles. Um, and we've got lots of different bubbles. So I'm kind of setting them up on the block. And again, we're going to do some bubble stamping, flipping the stamp. I'm go ahead and clean that one off. And then we got these individual bubbles where we can just kind of add a few more. even kind of touch them because they're bubbles so why not right uh Brienne says have I already tallied these cards I was actually thinking that Brienne I no I haven't I've got a lot of tallying to do and I wish so Brienne's asking me at the end of last year she was like how many cards did you make last year and I'm like I don't know and I started to like estimate and it was a crazy number of cards <laughs> Um, and so this year for fun, I'm kind of keeping track of how many cards I make. And I think we've established we'll do a fun giveaway in the fall and have everybody guess, but, um, or at the end of the year. But, um, I wish what I do is I kind of jot them down on a post-it note and then I'm stamping out cute little stars for every card that I made in my uh, journal. But I wish I kept a running tally of the, like, you know, get cracking on Christmas June too you know I wish I kept track of that because sometimes I go back to my tally and I'm like oh did I count this one yet and I can't remember so long story short a lot of cards thank you guys so much you're so sweet so the one thing I am not going to do today for sake of time but I'm going to show you is I did a thin layer of uh, glossy accents down here and put some chunky glitter uh, just to have along the sea floor, but unfortunately, um, well, not unfortunately, but it just glossy accents takes, takes like a half hour to dry, so we don't have time for that today. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to grab a couple um, markers, and um, I'm going to actually grab a couple teal markers. I'm going to grab BG forty nine and BG thirteen. And I am going to just add a little bit of texture to the seafloor by doing some little dabs, just so things don't look like they're floating. I don't know. Sometimes it just bothers me. Um, I'm doing little dots with my Copic markers, but I am being gentle. I'm not pushing hard, but depending on how much you press is how much, um, how small or little the dot is. And you can do this even on watercolor cardstock. They won't, it won't ruin your markers. So we'll do a little dabs. Um, so I use BG 13 and now I'm using BG 49, which is much darker. So I'm going to do less of these dots, um, so that they don't overpower the look of the lighter dots. 
just something to something a little fun to add a little bit of a ground for everything to hang out on all right all right, so now we're gonna go ahead and build our shaker. So I got my plastic piece, I didn't lose it. I'm so proud of myself. All right, and so what we're going to do is I'm gonna take some double-sided tape that is nice and strong, and I'm gonna add it on, all, on the back, on all four sides on the paper. So it was a little chilly in my house when I was getting ready this morning, but the sun has finally come out and now my studio is getting roasty toasty and I'm sitting here in my sweatshirt and I'm a little warm, not complaining. I've had a little slow start to summer this year, which is okay, I'm not mad about it because last summer we had like a cold and raw Memorial Day weekend, and then we went right to a million degrees all summer. So um, I'm okay with a little bit of a slower start this year. Thank you, guys. All right, so I kind of went double thickness um, just so that I make sure that it touches on all the plastic when I start to wrap it and I'll share that with you guys in a minute um, I'm only gonna peel off three sides for now so we can fill our shaker okay so I've got three sticky sides and again we're just lining this up So that I'll try this way. There we go. We just want to make sure our shaker bits aren't going to get out. So now what I'm going to do is just wrap the plastic tabs that we kind of created by um, trimming those corners. We're wrapping those I'll kind of bring it up but we've wrapped it there and we've got our little shaker pocket here okay so I'm gonna grab some shaker bits um, when I guest designed for Trinity stamps she sent me some of her new flat um, sequins embellishments which are just perfect for this type of thing because they're not too bulky and I actually have an idea. I have an idea. I'm excited. I have an idea. Um, let's see. Kate says she feels like we're a month behind for weather in New England this year. My plants haven't been that happy with the exception of the grass. Yeah, Chris was just mentioning he has to mow again. He's like, oh my gosh. All right. I don't want to pour too many in here. So I love this little tray from Trinity. Um, where are you in New England, Kate, if you don't mind sharing? Um, and so now what I can do is just take a few little pinches of these guys and start to put them in. You want some, but you don't want too many that you're not able to kind of see your cute little scene, right? And then we'll put a few of these white ones in. And I believe I linked to what colors I'm using. Again, mine aren't labeled because these were just some samples that she sent um, when I was designing with the new release. So I don't remember the exact names, but I believe if I didn't link to them on the blog post, I listed the colors out in my blog post description. Oh, Rhode Island, yeah. The other beachy place. I know, oh, I lived in Rhode Island for three years. We actually lived in North Providence. And for it to be the ocean state, I was so sad at how long it took us to get to a beach. <laughs> I was so spoiled living here on the Cape, but yeah. 
All right, and then my other fun idea, you guys, is I think I'm gonna sprinkle a little bit of um, chunky glitter in here since I didn't put it along the seafloor. Why not? We only live once, right? We only live once. So let me grab my chunky glitter. And I'm just gonna put a little bit, just a little bit in. I'm gonna actually uh, use the end of my glue tube like a scoop so I don't get too much. I don't want a spoonful. Oh yeah. Jen, if you're still listening, maybe I should send this card to Lindsay for Christmas. She does not, my friend Lindsay does not like glitter. She tolerates it for me, but she's not a fan. Okay. Oh, yeah, you guys. Oh, yeah. All right. So you can see all that fun. I'm going to get this sealed up so I don't make a mess. All right. And now I'm just gonna, again, just fold that little tab of plastic over. Oh my gosh, so cute with the glitter. I love it. Good, good decision, Jen. It always is a good decision to use glitter, right? I love it, it's so fun. So fun, so cute. Okay, I don't need to sit here and play with it for five years. <laughs> Let's go ahead and uh, finish up our card. So I'm gonna grab a card base, cause you know, this is the year of me putting all of my cards on card bases. Although I don't think all of them have made it, but the majority of my cards onto card bases. Um, Jen, did you live anywhere near Littleton when you were in New Hampshire? I did not live near Littleton. I actually grew up in uh, Pembroke, New Hampshire which is between Concord and Manchester. And then I um, went to Keene State, so in Keene, New Hampshire. And then after college, I lived in uh, Penacook, which is right next to Concord for a little bit. But um, my dad lived in Loudoun for a little bit, um, and now he lives in Meredith. But I'm very familiar with Littleton. Um, Josie, my friend Josie, who helps me, and she's actually gonna work for me this summer. I'm so excited. Um, she grew up in Franconia, so up in Littleton. And my grandfather had a bed and breakfast up in Landaff, which is also up there as well. Um, okay. So we've got our background down. Now we just need to make sure that we obviously have room for our shaker, but then we have our two little wave strips. So we're just gonna kind of figure out where those are gonna go, right? So let's maybe adhere these guys together first. Chris and I actually were up in New Hampshire last weekend. I went up to see my dad. We took him for lunch for Father's Day and then I went up to where I grew up and caught up with a, a, a childhood friend of mine. We've kept in contact on Facebook, but we haven't seen each other since my high school graduation. Um, and she so happens just to have purchased a house on the in the section of Pembroke that we grew up in. So it was just kind of crazy to be back there. I was like, whoa, but it was a lot of fun too. And then we went to the seacoast where Chris's daughters live and we got to see them. So it was a full, full day. Um, ah, thank you so much. I love sea themed cards too. I wanna make all the sea themed cards, right? So I'm just kind of holding that shaker card in, um, shaker part in place. I've got my dot runner behind these waves and I'm just gonna kind of put my waves at whatever height I want them. So there's still a little beach and that they're peeking out over the shaker, right? Just like so. And I'm actually gonna use my ATG gun um, for the shaker part. I just think it's a little bit of a stronger 
adhesive than the dot runner, especially this is pretty bulky now and with the plastic and all the things. I don't like my cards to fall apart, so. All right. Something else that's fun, you guys, um, because I do make so many cards and I'm really bad at sending them, except I do send my Christmas cards. Um, I send out about 120 of them. Um, but I have been uploading um, cards to my website. There's a section in my online shop called Cards for Therapy. Uh, cards for Charity Therapy. I was thinking of crafting as our therapy. Cards for Charity. And so you can purchase some of my handmade cards and all the proceeds. They are sold for $10 a piece. And all of that $10 is donated to our local shelter, um, Animal Shelter, where I got all three of my kitties from. Um, and I started uploading my cards last November, and I don't do it very often, although Josie is working on doing a big update soon. But so far, we've raised $650 um, for the local MSPCA. So very, very awesome. All right. This poor, this poor crab is drowning. He's drowning in the bubbles. So now we're going to finish building our scene. This is so cute. One thing I do just want to point out, um, because I did already pre-glitter, but for the little lights on the um, sandcastle, I actually used a little bit of glossy accents on those lights and then put Prisma glitter over it. And that just made the lights um, really dimensional. I'm trying to get it to show up. But it just makes those lights really nice and like almost 3D. I'm trying to get it to show up, but it's not cooperating. Um, but okay, so I'm going to adhere some of this flat and some of it popped up. Now that we're not on the shaker part, we can have a little bit of fun um, with some dimension. Um, Erica says, I've been using the search bar more on your website since you mentioned it during your last class. Well, thank you, Erica. Yeah, Erica's mentioning um, all of the projects that I share on my website. Um, I always tag them with the product names. So for instance, you know, we're using Christmas fishes today. If you go to my website, shirkus.com, and you search, um, you know, Christmas fishes, you'll see any cards that I have created with that stamp set. So of course, uh, there's a lot of Lawn Fawn cards on there, but there's also all the other brands that I design for. And as long as you're searching for the actual product name, you'll kind of see um, see some inspiration. So if you guys are ever in a creative rut and you're looking for ideas, or maybe you remembered you saw it on my website, um, that's a nice, easy way to be able to find those details. All right, Santa's getting popped up, because he can. And then we've got a little sand pail, because he was just busy making this sand castle. So we're gonna tuck that little sand pail um, under him. <laughs> yes, my friends get birthday cards from me and Jen and Lindsay are making a shadow box with them all. I can't wait to see them, but I also want to know what you're going to do when you grow out of space on the, on the, um, on the shadow box. All right, I'm just lifting that wave up a little bit because I thought it was so cute. I kind of tucked the shovel in there a little bit. So fun. And then we have our seashell presents. How cute are these? We've got like a little scallop shell present. I'm gonna put that one down flat. And then I'm gonna put a foam square behind the whelk shell. So cute with their little bows. And I'm gonna lift this little wave up a little bit. There we go. So cute. And then we have our sunshine. He's living his best life with his sunglasses on. And the sunglasses come in the set because they will also fit on Santa's face. And I bet that they would fit on the jellyfish and possibly the crab too. Super cute. I haven't tried that yet, but I just thought of it. And then what I did on the sunglasses is I'm going to add just a little bit of the black glaze pen. 
So um, the Sakura Black Lace Pen really never clogs, but it does get a little film on the tip of it every time, even if, I mean, I literally just used this yesterday. So I always just roll it a little bit onto some scratch paper just to get it going again. And then um, we're gonna fill in his sunglasses and it's gonna give it a little bit of a gloss, a little bit of shine. It's gonna make it a bit darker than the ink. Um, you can't really do wicked fine detail with this pen because it does kind of flow out a little bit heavier than the white gel pen and the um, quickie glue pen. But big areas like that, it works really, really cool. Like, look at that. So fun. Yeah, there's that shine. So fun. So there we go, you guys. We've got two beachy Christmas cards. I love it. I cannot wait to send these out in December. I'll probably choose somebody that's not in a tropical area to kind of just give them a little bit of hope and life while we're those of us that have cold winters all we do is count down to our summer months um at least that's what you know chris and me and my friends do um because we love summer so much uh yeah if you guys could take a minute and hit the thumbs up on this video i would appreciate it that just helps other people find this video um again this is part of my Get Cracking on Christmas series. So the third Thursday of the month, I will always have a post on my website sharing my project. And I'll give you guys the details um, for when the live will be. And then you can always pop on over here and tap the little bell. I always schedule the video ahead of time. So you can tap the little bell and then you'll be notified um, when I am live. But yeah, oh my gosh, I love these guys so much. I'm literally obsessed with that butter ink from Lawn Fawn. I've been using it in all of the things lately. If you've been taking any of my online classes, um, you know very, very well that I've been using it in all of the things. So thank you guys so much. I hope to see you in an online class soon. Remember, I just uh, launched Tutti Fruity online class, the details for that, so you can register. There's a limited amount of kits left. They are going to sell out. They're close to selling out now. So if that's something that you want, uh, make sure you do that sooner or later. Uh, registration for my Creative Journey Art Retreat is opening up on Saturday. You guys can come and hang out with me here on Cape Cod. We're going to have an oceanfront view while we create together all weekend. It's going to be a blast. I cannot wait. I'm so excited. Um, and yeah, I can't wait to see your cards. Make sure you use that hashtag, Get Cracking on Christmas. And I will see you guys all again soon. Have a good day, guys. Bye.